Hello, hi, how are you today? In this video, I wanna to talk to you about anxious attachment, which is something that almost everyone on the journey becomes familiar with. And here's the really odd thing about it. You could have been very self-confident, you could have had, you know, never had these feelings and all of a sudden it will come up for you. Why? Because it's like someone pulls a thread on you and it gets triggered one way or another. But let's talk about what this is because many people wonder, should they attach, should they detach? Or they talk about when they detach, this is when things happen. What isn't really understood is how your whole makeup, your emotional body leads you to feel like this because you'll have physical feelings and physical sensations that make your mind kind of run all scattered and run for the wind. and it's not healthy. It doesn't feel healthy. People are made to feel sometimes like they're being put on someone else's emotional roller coaster. They love you. They love you not. You're always questioning. You don't know where you stand. Um, do you find yourself doing these things? Calling and texting just to make sure everything is okay. That's a very common thing. Or even if you can't, you'd like to, and you do it in roundabout ways where you're trying to find someone who knows them or think of a plausible excuse to reach out and call their work or just hear their voice or something. And all the time you feel inside like you are just losing it. You shouldn't have to resort to such things and yet you can't help yourself. You're getting, you know, very uh, urgent feelings that this is something you need to do just to stay balanced. And it still doesn't make you feel balanced. Do you find that you develop resentments over people in their life? Their wife, their girlfriend, their um, family, the, fam the children that they have. You know, you feel like you're looking through the window at a life you should have and it's not your life, you're not a part of it, you're not being included, you're looking at something that uh, is just festering at you inside and making you develop these resentments of people that you don't even know. And you may even find that, you know, this reflects on your own self feelings about yourself. How does it make you feel? Are you feeling upset with your own self knowing that you know better and then knowing that you almost cannot even help it because the resentment is there. Do you feel like you're so preoccupied with them, what they're doing, if they're sick, you feel a sensation and then you run to check it out and you try to get any information that you can and you try to glean what is going on by trying to use telepathy and things like that and it, it just doesn't work that way. They have their own life, you have yours, instead of focusing on you. You have to focus on yourself, your well-being, your emotional regulation, what makes you healthy. If you're around them, do you wind up asking for what do they even like about you? Because somehow you're lost in this and you're not even sure because you are not sure where you stand. Now, there are people like that. There are people that will deliberately put you off balance where you don't even know where you stand with them. You don't know if you're having a relationship. You don't know if they like you. Those are not your people. That is not your person. That is that is like really bad behavior on their part. And yet people are subjected to it day in and day out, day in and day out. It happens with jobs too. You get the cold shoulder from your boss. You don't know what it means. And that is another point to be made. Does your head start reading into everything and everything is like a mixed signal for you and you can't make heads or tails. You don't know which side is up. You don't know which side is down. You cannot really understand what is happening to you, how people really feel about you. Do they value you? Should you be there? Should you be looking elsewhere? This is a big concern all over for so many people. And yet it is a very common human trait to treat each other very coldly, where it makes people feel the wall that's there and not know where do they belong. Where do they belong? Are they a part of it? Are they participating? Are they in it? Are they cared for? 
None of that is able to be perceived or felt. Are you a person who reads into everything? Please stop that. How do you detach from this? This is a part of the attachment is because the head starts attaching significance to things that should not be significant whatsoever. They are not significant to what is actually happening for you. Not what's happening generally in the situation, but for you. Do you avoid breaking up or breaking away because you don't know what else will replace it? That happens a lot. People stay, would rather stay in a bad relationship or a bad marriage because it's the, it's the demon that's familiar to them. They know how to deal with that demon. The unknown is the fear of the unknown. That's what people have, fear of missing out, fear of the unknown. And so they take no actions whatsoever. And they continue reacting. That is the really paradoxical thing here is that they will continue reacting and reacting and reacting. I know this because I've worked with people coaching them and I've had my own situations. In fact, when I was going through my divorce, I was talking about what was happening with my ex until it even bored me. That was my number one clue that it was time to stop is that my and I know it now, my soul was detaching from all those boring, repetitive things, but it was really intense for me and it was emotionally painful. Don't think that your soul can't feel pain. Your soul feels pain all the way down to this human level of yourself. You have an emotional body, you have a psyche. These parts of you are intended to push off of pain. They're like warning signals, they're danger signals. They are red flags, and yet many times we override our own best impulses for ourselves, and we continue on with it. And that is unhealthy, to say the least, if not downright dangerous and detrimental. You can't prove your worth to someone who doesn't even think about you or give you the time of day or reciprocate and is frankly not interested in you. So if we're to talk about karmic twins, there's no such thing as a karmic twin. There is no twin there. It's a karmic soulmate. Chronic things continue happening, chronic illness, chronic pain, chronic situations, because it's karma, because it's karmic. And how do you detach from this? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to talk about it in another video. If you need help with this, um, please know that you're not alone. I myself have been through it. I have helped many people. Uh, for years, I helped people rearrange their lives when they were going through a divorce. And it was primarily women, occasionally some men, because women are very ill prepared for these things. We are socialized in a certain way. And there is something to be said about the way that males approach things versus the way that females do and you have to find your divine feminine to in order to do this and balance yourself emotional regulation is one of the keys but we have other keys and you have a brand new set of chakras to help you easily do this thanks so much for watching and stay tuned